Do leaked documents show that Ukraine was trying to expand the war all the way to the Middle East? I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. It's April 21st, 2023. This is your daily Ukraine update. Let's get into it. Okay, first, let's take a look at the control map. Biggest changes, again, they keep calling these things like minor frontline updates or clarifications. Uh, but these are these are not insignificant gains by Russian forces, um, as you can see, taking a number of city blocks in the south, especially along this canal here, again, occupying uh, up to significant uh, obstacles is a good tactic, uh, again, especially if you are, in the case of the Russians, trying to make these block-by-block -block advances. Um, they're not trying to stage breakthroughs. They're using uh, their assault detachments to just unpeel back Ukrainian strong points block-by-block. -block. Um, Ukrainians seem to be conducting an orderly retreat. And as we discussed uh, we've been discussing for a while, pinning large numbers of Russian forces in Bakhmut as they push for this victory that they uh, need for political reasons primarily, um, is a potentially effective strategy, though um, it will have to be, you know, aligned with a Ukrainian counteroffensive somewhere. Um, it's important that, again, what, they, what you don't want to see happen is uh, Russia wrap up in Bakhmut and begin to reassign VDV, Spetsnaz, and uh, top-tier Wagner units to other areas of the front lines where they'll be better prepared to defend any Ukrainian counter-offensive. Um, now, taking a look at the combat map, you can see it hasn't really been updated. Um, but what I did want to talk about is two war stories that I thought were really interesting. And we're actually going to pivot over, of course, to Ground News, the uh, sponsor of this video. And they're also just they're the easiest sponsor because I use them even in videos where I don't bring it up. Um, I still use them to help me fact check stories since there's a lot of mis and disinformation on here. Uh, two stories that I thought were really interesting. The first is that Russia admitted accidentally striking one of its own cities near Ukraine. This seems preposterous because uh, Russia admitting to a mistake is is madness, but also um, having such a blatant error uh, is is pretty tremendous. Um, and as you can see, it's being widely reported by a whole bunch of different news sources, including Reuters, The Guardian, New York Post. So uh, a wide range and across the political spectrum. Uh, so apparently what happened is a Russian bomber accidentally hit its own city near the Ukrainian border. And what makes this so crazy is that we've seen uh, of course, that Russian uh, and, and Ukrainian, to be honest, uh, warplanes uh, just don't seem to have the same level of avionics that a uh, U.S. or NATO uh, fighter would. Uh, but in almost every case, they have a uh, GPS mapping software right there mounted to the plane. Very easy to do. Um, and the uh, so it should be apparent when you are and are not near your target. Um, it claims, of course, it released the bomb through an accidental emergency ejection at 10 p.m. on Thursday during a flight over Belogorod, uh, according to TASS. Um, I don't know. I'm skeptical. I mean, Russian planes, I get it, maintenance issues, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but an accidental emergency ejection of the weapon system seems pretty crazy um of course ukrainian commentators uh, speculated ukraine was behind the attacks um and uh that uh, some the belagorod governor said three people were injured from the explosion but they were not life threatening um <clears throat> So a really, really um, unforced error. And, and don't get me wrong, right? U.S. forces also um, have, they, they almost never uh, operate with um, uh, live weapons. So it's, it's not quite one-to-one, -one, but they do have fatal training accidents, helicopter crashes, that sort of thing. It's, a, it's a, a sad reality of military operations, both intensive training and um you know, peacetime operations. It just means that, you know, the, the 
Some of it is inherent to military operations, but some of these are unforced errors, and definitely dropping a bomb on your own city is one such unforced error. So pretty surprising there. The second one, which I thought was even more shocking, is leaked documents that show that Ukrainian uh, Ukraine planned attacks on Russian forces in Syria. And this is, again, also widely reported by credible news sources, Washington Post, uh, La Republica, of course, the Russians, uh, TASS uh, reporting it, as well as um, some German uh, right-leaning press outlets. But it still seems to be widely reported enough that it is likely uh, true, though I, I wouldn't trust RIA, a Russian affiliated, um, <laughs> Russian affiliated news outlet. But when we look at uh, the Press Herald, um, they're reporting that again, Ukraine planned attacks in Syria according to the leaked documents, uh, and that it was thought that it may impose costs and casualties on Russia and its Wagner Group. Um, but it's really, really hard uh, to do. Because remember, opening another front requires not just Russia to maintain it, but it also requires Ukraine to open another front. And frankly, that itself is pretty hard to do. The idea, of course, was that by imposing casualties on Wagner Group in Syria, that Moscow may find itself forced to redeploy resources from Ukraine as Syria becomes more intensive. Um, Ukrainian President Zelensky directed a halt to the planning in December, um, but it was uh, seriously considered. Um, and apparently the U.S. Uh, got the document from human intelligence sources, uh, which means a person. Someone leaked this document to U.S. intelligence. Um have, Ukraine planned to make it a plausible, deniable attack that wouldn't implicate the government itself, likely relying on the Kurds. Um, and this is part of, of course, Putin's campaign since 2015 to back up the Assad regime, um, which has created a presence of thousands of Russian troops. Uh and, and really turned the tide of the war in Syria in favor of Assad. Um, just a testament to sort of there's there's levels to warfare. And certainly the deployment to Russian deployment to Syria uh, was decisive for the Syrian civil war in favor of Assad. Um, and yet that military, despite being absolutely able to uh, shellac uh, ISIS and other uh, non-state actors fighting there, uh, were still able, still couldn't hold a candle to uh, Ukrainian armed forces, or rather lost badly to Ukrainian armed forces in this more conventional fight. Um, again, this all, uh, this all seems like uh, a vague planning um, that never really got beyond the planning phases. Um, <clears throat> so it's, yeah, it, it also sounds like the Syrian, um, the Kurdish SDF, uh, refused to strike Russians in Kurdish areas. Obviously they didn't want to run the risk of reprisals and, uh, are focused heavily on, um, not, trying to triangulate themselves since the SDF's primary enemies are uh, Turkey. If you've ever seen any Civdiv, you know that the Kurds and Turks hate each other. Um, but that Turkey was apparently aware of the planning, but Turkish officials sought to avoid potential blowback um, and tried to make Ukrainians stage their attacks in Kurdish areas. So you see how this sort of planning can quickly become very, very, very embroiled. Um, but still a fascinating look on the efforts by Ukraine uh, to escalate this war um, in directions that are not conventional. Uh, very, do I think it's the right call? No, I don't think so. Russia's, Russia's forces are way more deployable than, um, than Ukraine's and the Kurds probably don't have the resources or willingness to engage in this fight. Anyway, guys, if you want to support the channel, you know, I got booted off Patreon and I'm routinely demonetized in my other content. Um, so the best way to support is of course on combatvetnews.com. We have free news stories, all the ones that I can't get to here in the daily updates. We have all my YouTube videos for free, but we also have members only content um, where I'm dropping a new video today where you can check out all the GoPro footage, the drone footage, um, 
um, everything, uh, as well as the old Patreon archives that I'm steadily in the process of uploading. Um, it's a great way to get insight into the reality of the war. And more importantly, it's the best way to support what I do here. Um, it's less expensive than the Patreon. And I really appreciate everybody that supports the channel, especially our channel members. Thanks to our Colonel tier members and our Lieutenant tier members. I'll see you guys in the next one.